Saints Day. All Saints Day actually happens on November 1st, but kind of moved up to the, the following Sunday. And so we remember those saints who have gone before us. We also today remember that we ourselves are saints. And as we do so, we're going to hear three readings today that are very pertinent for the day. We're going to hear a reading from St. Paul, where he reminds us that for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. And then my, my focus here, though, this, this morning is especially going to be on the book of Revelation, where we see a crowd, a multitude of saints around the throne of, of, of the Lamb, of our Lord Christ. And then also, in the Gospel reading, we're going to hear about the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And so, um, we're going to be hearing the, the Beatitudes as well today. And that's going to be my focus, is between the book of Revelation and also the Beatitudes this morning. Also this morning on All Saints Day, we are going to read the names of all those who have passed away and entered into eternal glory since last All Saints Day. And we're going to have a special ceremony for that. And then we're going to have a moment of silence where you can remember in your own heart those who maybe have passed away and passed in your life. And remember that they are with the Lord. And then also today, Everett has taken classes. And Everett Mountain is going to become a member of today as well. So that is the, that's all those things that are going on today. And so once again, our focus is All Saints Day. We begin with the first hymn. Thank you.
have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes, made them white, and the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. Let me never be Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, redeem me, God. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, God of truth. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they rest from their labors. For their deeds follow them. On this day, we remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us with the sign of faith. For they were created by God to offer him prayer, praise and thanksgiving forever. And he gave them new life through his Son in holy baptism. And nourished them in the company of his people at his holy table. And in his mercy, has summoned them to his nearer presence, so that they may continue in joyful service of him forever.
of the resurrection to eternal life. We remember before you, O Lord, all our departed family and friends who have gone before us in the faith. We especially remember Marty Nelson, Carlton Anderson, Isla White, Nancy Malusinik, May Niedermeyer, Roberta Gossel, C. John Eng, and all those who we now name in our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious Father in Jesus Christ, we remember with thanksgiving before you all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was the resurrection and the life, with whom the Lord Jesus, we are one forevermore. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make all of its members grow in love for you and for one another. As you have received our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection to eternal life, bring us at last with them into the light of your presence, that in union with all your saints we may laud and magnify your name forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
We give you humble and hearty thanks for the witness of all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. Grant us courage to follow your saints of old and all virtuous and godly living, and preserve us in the one true faith, that together with them we may sing your praises in heaven through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the, Old, in the New Testament reading for the, for the reading of All Saints Day is from the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. <coughs> After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. And the epistle reading is from Philippians, the first chapter. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help given me by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. This is the word of the Lord.
got to pay the electric. <laughs> Those who are still on this side of eternity 
He wants us to see that, yes, we are going to be afflicted. We're going to be afflicted with pain and sickness and disease, with limbs. We might not be able to walk. We're going to be, I don't know, we're not going to be afflicted with demons, but we're going to be harassed by them. They're going to tempt us. We're going to have all kinds of afflictions and problems. And what do we do with our problems? But we gather around Christ and give them to Him. And He'll grant us the strength to bear them until He relieves us. But in the end, we see that we are conquerors in Christ Jesus who died and rose. Yes, once again, he wants to see that as his disciples, we will be afflicted here on earth. But there is eternal glory waiting for us. So for the next few minutes, I want to, I want to compare these two crowds. That what Jesus saw, what came to him that he taught up on that mount, that sermon on the mount. And then I want to kind of jump over to what John sees in the book of Revelation and see if it is fulfilled. I won't be able to get to all the Beatitudes, but I'll get to most of them, or some of them. Let's see what Jesus sees. First of all, Jesus sees you. He sees those from the country, he sees those from the small towns, and so he begins by saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He is saying, that is who you are. Blessed are you who are poor in spirit. He is not telling you to be poor in spirit, he is telling you what you are. You are poor in spirit. You are so poor in the spiritual things that you have absolutely nothing to offer to Jesus or to God, your Heavenly Father. Jesus sees that once again, like that beggar last week, you're still that beggar. That you are a beggar with your hands out in need of his help. You are the one who is outwardly wasting away. You are, he sees that you are the one who is full of worry, even though he knows that, and you know that, you should not be. He sees you as one who has tried to control everything, and yet everything is out of your control. He sees you who come from a background that shows that you have absolutely no reason to gathered here hearing him at all, but yet you are. He sees you whose ears are open, just hoping to hear some hope, hoping to hear some words of eternal life. He sees you as one who's a beggar, whose hands are simply held out, saying, help. He sees you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And now jump to the book of Revelation and see what John sees. You, with the kingdom of heaven, yours is the white robe. Yours is that victory palm branch. Yours is that word salvation that is on your lips, so much so that you are singing, salvation belongs to the Lamb who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Jesus sees you. He says, Blessed are those who mourn, for you will be comforted. Jesus sees you mourn. He sees you mourn those whose names we read just a few minutes ago. He sees you mourning, because mourning doesn't go away. He sees you mourning those who have entered into eternal glory that, that you name silently in your heart. He sees you mourning what could have been, and maybe what should have been, if it hadn't been for sin. He sees you mourning your own stupid sins, your own willful sins, your unintentional sins. He sees you mourning how your sins have hurt others. 
how other sins have hurt you. He sees you mourn, and he says you will be comforted. Now we jump over to seeing what John sees. John sees those who have gone before us, where we shall be. He sees them led by the Lamb to the springs of living water, and how there, belong the, the living water, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. See, the Lamb, and also the shepherd who leads, he knows our tears are real, because he became one of us and he shed tears. He went to the tomb of Lazarus, his good friend, and he wept. He looked over to Jerusalem and he lamented tears. He cried on the cross. He knows, that, he knows what tears and the heartbreak that we have are. And he rose and he prepared a place for us. And now all those who have gone before us in glory and we who will be there someday, <coughs> we follow him. And we'll be comforted, and we will have every tear wiped away from our eyes, even as those who have gone before us have had their every tear wiped away from their eyes. Jesus sees you. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. He sees the people who cannot and do not make great claims in the kingdom of God. And he promises they will inherit the earth. Inherit, of course, we all know that, that, that inherit is a, is a grace word. It means that somebody else has done all the work and now they give it to you because they love you. You who make no claim, you who are meek, you inherit the earth. And Jesus is not talking about this earth. That, you know, goes around the sun one time a year. No, he's not talking about this earth. He's talking about the earth yet to come. The new heaven and the new earth. And no, we don't get a picture of it in our reading from the book of Revelation today. That new earth is going to happen when all of this comes to an end. Matter of fact, the saints in heaven are actually waiting. How long, the Lord? But we do get kind of a glimpse. We do get kind of a glimpse with that, that earth we're going to inherit is going to be like, that we're going to be in the presence of God and the Lamb, and they will shelter us with their presence forevermore. Jesus sees you. He sees you who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness and promises you will be filled. He sees you who are on the inside longing to be right with God. He sees you who are hungering and thirsting for a life that was what life was like before the fall into sin. He sees you hungering and thirsting to be one with God. And he promises you shall be satisfied. Now we get to see what John sees. John sees those in the white robes and who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They're righteous. They're covered with the righteousness of Christ. At a baptism, we give a white, white, white garment that says, So you have been clothed with the righteousness of Christ. So shall you forever stand before him. You've been clothed with, they, those in heaven, they've been clothed with Christ's righteousness. And now you can see it fully in their white robes. And you, you who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness right now, you have been clothed with the righteousness of Christ in your baptism. It's now, not yet, it's now, not yet, and in eternity you will know it fully. And there you will know just how much Christ has covered with his righteousness forevermore as you take up your white, white robe that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb and made white. John looks and he sees you, the peacemakers. 
And he says, you shall be called the sons of God. He sees you who try to reconcile with those who hurt you, made you angry, who were rude to you. He sees you, those, he sees you reconciling with those who have hurt you. He sees you trying to be, trying to bring the reconciliation of Christ to a world that loves conflict. And he says, you will be called the sons of God. All of you, all of us get to be called sons of God. Men and women and wife, we all get to be called the sons of God because what happens there is that we are elevated. There's only one, there's only one son of God, right? No. There's sons of God. And we are elevated up to the very level of Jesus Christ. And look what happened to him, the ultimate peacemaker, the Prince of Peace. He died, and he rose, and he sits on the throne, and now we see in glory all the sons of God, men and women alike, are in eternity with the Son of God forevermore. Finally, John's, Jesus sees that you are going to be lied about, and that you're going to be persecuted. He says, rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Your reward is what, you, what John sees. The entire vision. The palm branches, which are signs of victory. The white robes, the hymn of salvation, being laid to springs of living water. The lamb being our shepherd and wiping away every tear from our eyes. So, that's what John sees. That's what Jesus sees. What do we see? Today we see the church. And we see, we in the church, we see ourselves, we see those who, who have gone before us, as we remember them. Yeah, we see that they had suffered, they had sickness, they had pain, they had all kinds of afflictions, just like we, we will or we do. And we gather together around Jesus, and we need him and his help, and we follow him, and we hear his word. And what do we say, what do we see today by faith? We see the church in glory, at rest, victorious, around Jesus Christ. We shall be with it, him forevermore, and all those things who have gone before us. Because Christ is died, Christ is risen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God who passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. We will now gather the offering. Father, we pray for the faith to see ourselves as Jesus sees us, to see ourselves blessed even as we are poor in spirit, even as we mourn, and even as we are persecuted. And grant us the faith to be sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Especially help us to be sure and certain of our salvation, because our robes have been washed and then made white in the blood of the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for Bethesda Lutheran Church. May our voice be clear here and in our community that there is salvation in the Lamb who was slain. And may that voice be clear on the roadbed and pine res reservations as that word is proclaimed by Pastor Andrew Utah and Pastor Albert Sutton. May that, that voice be clear in Japan and throughout Asia as it is proclaimed by Pastor Dan Jasper. May that word be clear in all places and in all nations that people from every language may join that ever-growing voice that shouts, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And you have told us that there is no authority established except for that authority which you yourself have established. So we pray for those whom you have placed in office, in 
the federal, state, and local levels. Grant them wisdom and competence that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives in all godliness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And you have made us the body of Christ in this place. And each of us has a part to play. And each of us are essential to it. So we thank you for Jonathan Newmaker and Jocelyn Newmaker. Be with them and sustain them. And help all of us grow together in love for Christ and love for one another. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the ill and injured that they would be healed in due time. We pray for those in the nursing care facilities. Be with them and grant them confidence that you care for them and that they are not alone. Be with those who are especially in need of strength, Clarence Jerky and Joanne Berg. Help them in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we thank you for the weather which you have given to us that the harvest may be brought in. We pray for those who are still harvesting that their crop might be brought in in a timely manner. We pray for the businesses and industries of our community, that they would flourish according to your will. We thank you for our jobs and vocations. May we be faithful in them, and may they provide for us a good and decent living according to your will. And use us to be merciful to those who are in need. And we pray that you would bless our schools and teachers, that our children may be prepared for a vocation to serve you and their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We again thank you for all those saints who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Grant that we may be also be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And if ever it would come forward, please. Dear friend in Christ, the members of our congregation are happy that you are able to become part of our Christian fellowship. And our Lord Jesus Christ um, bids us to confess him before men with the promise that he will then confess us before his Father in heaven. That we may rejoice in your confession, I now ask you in the presence of God and, and before your brothers and sisters in Christ, do you accept and confess that the teachings of the Lutheran Church, as you've come to know them from the small catechism, are faithful and true to the Word of God? If so, answer, I do. As a member of Bethesda Lutheran, do you intend to continue in the confession of this church, attend worship, and make diligent use of the means of grace, which are the sacrament of the altar, and as much as you are able, lead a righteous and godly life? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers, time, treasures, and talent? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. Upon this your promise, I in the name of this congregation extend to you the right hand of fellowship and love, acknowledging you as a member of the Lutheran Church, and inviting you to receive the Lord's Supper and to participate in all the blessings of salvation which God has given to His church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you. And you may take your seat. Please stand. And let's continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life and a joyful reunion with those who have died in the faith. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen.
to make me see how God works. And, and vocation is a big word in how God works in a lot of ways through our lives. We may even po hone in a little bit on what God, how God would have us live and, and what he wants for us in our lives. So that, that's going to take place right here in the sanctuary after some coffee and some, and, and some notes and whatever else we have for breakfast. Stop over there, by the way, and, and, and get some coffee and have fellowship with one another. Um, other than that, are there any other announcements? Right. It is in the bulletin, but I just want to remind the uh, uh, Lutheran Missionary League ladies that we are having our meeting this next Saturday at 10 o'clock in the fellowship room, so please come. Thank you. What is that? Yes, uh, Concerned Women for America of South Dakota does the Encourage a Legislator Project each year. For those of you new to South Dakota, um, our South Dakota Legislator meets January through March. And the goal of Concerned Women of America's Encourage a Legislator Project is to have a, per each, a person adopt each legislator and pray for them during the legislative session. The other part of that is sending a postcard each week. Um, and that postcard has a Bible verse, and you're told exactly what to write on it. It's not political. It's not about legislation. It's just that you're praying for them. Um, if you would like to participate in that program, if you would please um, talk to me after church, because now is when we're getting gathering those names so that we know that all the legislators are covered in prayer. Um, so if you're interested in that, like I say, talk to me after church. Thanks. Um. So Operation Christmas Child, um, we have to run out of the, the pamphlets for the boxes. And so what we're asking is if uh, when you put your $9 donation in for each box, uh, just enclose it in an envelope and Patty and I will try and take care of that and make sure it gets to the proper spot for the donation part of it. And then if you could have them back here at the church by next Sunday, that would be much appreciated when you can get them to the drop off point. And uh, if you don't happen to be here, you know, should be able to maybe drop them off by the office, or even if you bring them back to the table down there, we'll make sure they, they're accounted for. Okay. Any other announcements this morning? Oh, Jackie. Just a reminder that the youth have their fundraiser, water break fundraiser on the peninsula in the back. Um, and also on Wednesday nights we serve meals. So there's a sign up, I believe it's still on the bulletin board, to help cover the, the meals for the confirmation kids. If you're interested in helping out, um, that sign up's on there. Yeah, that's on the bulletin board. Don't look for it on the on the island. That's on the bulletin board. Sure. A couple of things I missed the November newsletter. So um, Christmas tree decorating will be happening that weekend of Thanksgiving to get ready for Advent. Um, the tree will go up on Saturday, and then if we have any other volunteers that want to help do the rest of the decorating in the church, that can happen Saturday or throughout the next week, just as long as we get it done again. Um, and then tied into that are all the plants in the back entryway. I need to find some homes for them for the month of December during Advent because they disappear so we can use that area for more of the decoration. So if anybody thinks they could take care of those plants or a couple of them want or something for a couple Cheryl. of weeks. Cheryl, you could put those in my classroom. I'll take care of them during Christmas. Oh, perfect. Okay, there we go. All right, we got to get off. <laughs> All right, thank you. And please note that this year, Thanks, we're not going to have a Thanksgiving Day service, we have a Thanksgiving Eve service at 7 p.m. So please note that. And any others, because we've got to get to know Everett a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Everett and I, we were meeting for, for a long time, haven't we, Everett? And we yeah. studied the small catechism and had a good time and, and really enjoyed um, it, we enjoyed our time together. So, cheers. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here we go. Let's, let's do things about, um, about Everett. What is your job? I am a dietary aide at the State Veterans Home. Tell us a little about, bit about yourself. I'm originally from Massachusetts. My mom and dad have passed away. I moved to Chadron in 2001 
just a bit before the attacks on 9 11. I moved up here in 2018 and have been here ever since. Do you have a favorite hymn? And you may tell us why if you want. My favorite hymn is Amazing Grace. It was my mom's favorite, and so it became my favorite as well. What are your hobbies? I like to watch movies, I like to cook, and I'm a gamer when I have time. Which of your scars has the best story behind it? <laughs> I have a big scar on my left leg. I was in a hit and run accident when I was a kid. I was with my dad. My dad and I were on a motorcycle and a car came by and sideswiped us and didn't even stop. I had to go to the hospital and had severe road rash, but I turned out okay. <laughs> Yay. What is your favorite food you like to eat or cook? So many, but I like to eat Chinese. I make a killer meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I made it, someone tried it and liked it so much she took some home. And her sister tried to steal it from her. <laughs> and they were fighting over it. <laughs> I ended up giving some to both sisters. And where is the most relaxing place where you have ever been? And um, he says, my adoptive parents have a trailer house outside of Hot Springs. When I go to visit them, they are so religious. Their faith in the country setting makes me feel so comfortable. So that's a little bit about Everett. Everett, it's a blessing to have you as a member of, of Bethesda Lutheran. And on behalf of everyone here, I just want to say welcome, and we're glad you're a member. Thank you, and I'm blessed to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I like those questions, you know? It helps us get to know them not only. It helps us get to know our members, our new members, I'm a little bit better. I might ask some of you to ask, even those of you who have been here for a long time, to answer some of those questions, just so we get to know you a little bit better, because I think it's important that we know each other a little bit more. So I mean, if I ask you that, don't be surprised. Sometimes I may read your answers. All right, well, today's been a blessed Sunday as we remember those saints who have gone before us and what our hope is in Christ as well. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all this week.